see if I can wipe that off, man. Let's get this. Uh, huh? How's that? How's that, my friend? We got that thing clean now. Tighten it up, straighten it up a little bit. All right, we're ready to go. Put a little brush on the noggin. Yep, that's what the day is. The day is seeking Wednesdays. Matthew chapter 7. Asking it is given. Seeking you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. So, here's the deal. We're going to seek today. We got the Bible right here today. And so, on these, dang, I'm in, in my brains. Let's see. Make sure ain't nobody coming. I ain't putting out enough trash, man. We need to go and bag that other stuff up, too. That's what we're going to do. We're going to fill them both up. We're gonna pick them both up, fill them both up. Yeah, yeah. I gotta drag those branches off. Yeah, yeah, that's what I gotta do. Yeah, but we're gonna uh, dive off into this Bible. I was reading Ecclesiastes again today. I think Solomon wrote, uh, am I reading Ecclesiastes or Song of Solomon? Which one? I think, I think I'm reading Ecclesiastes. I don't know which one. I think it's Ecclesiastes. I'm pretty sure. But anyway, all he was talking about was vanity. All the labor that you do, everything that you get, that goal, everything is, you know, why are you doing it? The motive behind it. See, a lot of times the motive behind it is just, just vanity. He used that a whole lot in there. I'm going to go ahead and look that word up. Two, two words I got to look up. I looked up passion. Well, I caught a glimpse of passion. I looked it up indirectly. You know what that means? I was actually looking up another one. That seemed a little crazy. Crazy to me. Alright, I was looking up another word. And then I saw, oh yeah, I know what I had typed in. I typed in passion versus purpose. That's what I typed in. And it was true, just like I had considered and thought about, that passion was on the emotional side. It was a feeling. So anything on that side is a choice. So I could be, I could choose to be passionate about anything. Let's say that, you know, to everybody can be passionate about anything. It's just their context. It's just the the uh the law of relativity the perspective is the word i'm looking for you know you may be going to work in hot heat hey look i ain't passionate about that but if you've been looking for a job for 30 years and then whenever you get a job you become king or something like that then you're gonna be passionate about it man as long as you got a job and that's what we were doing with we i work hard on my jobs until I get to a point where you know where you get get to a nice comfortable spot, then you be like, well, why am I working so hard? Then we kind of get sidetracked and distracted, see. Because a lot of times we be working and then somebody come in and say, oh man, man, they cheating you. See, that's the first thing. The man come in, he, he ruined the whole thing. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes it's for your good, but most of the time. Most time it ain't. A lot of time it just stirring up mess. But that was on that. Day. So I thought, finish, you know, reading the class Ecclesiastes. Of course, I did my prayer early this morning. I got to read Matthew chapter seven. Got that right there. But then I throw in my boy uh, Robert Jeffries, and guess what he was talking about? He was talking about labor relations. You know, are you worth your wages? Well, these guys in the Bible, this guy had hired some guys to work in his field all day for a quarter. Then he go back, six out, you know, picked them up at eight, throw them in the field. Then he went back to town, saw some other guy, hey man, we need some work too. It's about 12 o'clock, throw them in the field. Went back to town about five o'clock. He 
and say, man, ain't nothing but an hour left, man. But come on, throw them in the field. Then when he got through, he said, I'm gonna pay the guy that just can't pay him first. I'm gonna get him a quarter. So the guy was calculating, shoot, this guy worked an hour. We know how human beings get, we get to talking. Hey man, he got a quarter. Okay, shoot that, shoot. If he got a quarter, then I work two hours, I should get two quarters. Man, I work 12 hours, I should get 12 quarters. That's how they would calculate. But when it came down to it, I left a little part out because the guys he picked up first, he said, hey man, who wants to work in my field for a quarter? And they said, yeah, because they had to get work. They had to get it, you know what I'm saying? They the first ones out there at five o'clock in the morning, they had to get it. So when he paid them, they, got, they didn't get 12 quarters, they got a quarter too. He said, man, shoot, this ain't bad. You gave that guy who worked an hour a quarter. I've been here 12 hours. You gave me the same thing, a quarter. He said, man, look, when I pick you up, I ask, who want to work in my field for a quarter? Y'all raise your hand. I put you to work. That was the deal, right? But these other cats, man, it's my money. If I want to give them more than a quarter, I do it. So they was grumbling. You see what I'm saying? So you got to kind of look at that context of the lesson that you kind of learn about comparison. See, the guy would have been straight with the quarter. Happy. Life would have been fantastic for him with the quarter. But then he had to look at the other guy. Compared it. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? We, we're doing all this striving. Is it to help others? Or is it just the comparison, man? That's, that's the biggest deal. That's the comparison. You know what I'm saying? That's the biggest deal. Comparing what I got to somebody else got at 30, at 40, at 50, at 60. You know, I've been kind of racking my brain, you know, on this, this stock market and turning and all that stuff. I've been asking questions. Hey, I'm going to ask the questions, right? I'm going to ask the questions. You know, because I want to be on, I want to be in on something like that too, right? I want to get in on something like that too. You know what I'm saying? I want to get in on, on, on the windfall too, right? But I don't want to really like rack my brain or uh, do something crazy to where I can't enjoy the moment, see? I'm thinking about the future, but I got to enjoy the moment like right now. That's the hardest part, staying in the present. Man, y'all just being nosy. Pray they make their destiny safe and supernatural protection over these officers in the name of Jesus. I like to pray over the first responders. But yeah, so so I was coming home the other day and I was just thinking about what I was thinking about. Um, I was waiting on something. And I decided that, oh yeah, 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 yeah. See, they give these alerts out on our phone, right? They got their training us jump at these phones, you know what I'm saying? So you get these alerts out on the phones that the first one, when it, you know, it's, hey, it's just like the, the pool of Bethesda, you know? Hey, somebody stir your phone up and the first one get it, man, they get it. They get a lead. It's possibly $1,000, $500 or something. It's a lead. And so, um, I was sitting there, it's like three minutes left. I said, I could go do something. I said, no, nah, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna practice my meditation. Cause right there where I, I, I had my input at, I had already typed it out and got the little cursor that's blinking like every second, right? So I said, okay, I'm gonna do my box breathing on this thing. Four blinks in, hold for four blinks, out four blinks. So I chose that time. See, I could have just sat there and just been kind of resenting the time that they was making us wait and blah, blah, blah. I could have did that. But I said, man, you know, I'm going to practice that little box breathing, staying in the moment, staying right here in the moment. And, you know, that's what I did. So, and that's the key thing, man. It's not to discount right now. I know the one thing the guy called it hyperbolic discounting. You know, it's all about the perspective, man. It's all about the perspective. You know, uh, whether I'm looking too far ahead, man, look, I, I ain't got the riches right now. I'm gonna look so far ahead to where I get discouraged. Like last night, 
man, I ain't even playing. I still didn't play and I still didn't make the 411. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That Civic old odd and thing. Ah. That mug wiped my memory. I was going to work yesterday. One thing, Tuesdays. I was going to work. I was going to pull out my 411, which I did. I pulled it out. I read out my 411. I noticed that I didn't have a goal on there. I mean, I had a goal, but it really wasn't a real goal. You know what I'm saying? Because what I had did, I said, my goal is to have this, this notified, purified. My goal is to have these many calls done by the end of the year. But the reason I did that because I wanted to sell a certain amount of products. But I didn't have that goal on now. Why do I want to sell a certain amount of products? Is it to make a certain amount of money? See what I'm saying? Maybe I need to put a monetary goal on that. I kind of didn't want to put a monetary goal on that because I want to be, I want, I want my thought of money to be a byproduct. But maybe I should bring it to the forefront. Because I think all my life I hadn't, I didn't want to think about money because I didn't have enough of it. And me looking at it discouraged me. But I wanted to be. And so now, man, really, you know, having the money, as long as bills paid before my head clothes on my back and stuff like that, and we able to go on some trips, I'm good. But I think I got to change my relationship with money now that I'm thinking about it. I need to change my relationship with money and how I view it as a tool of economic evangelism. You know, I think that's an area. That's an area. Thank God I got my wife. Can't make that she think about she managed that money. I ain't lying. She managed it good. Great manager. You know what I'm saying? But that's something I gotta think about, right? Because I looked at my 411, it's not a goal on there. It's not a goal like uh, the uh, uh, like they like they beachfront property. It's not a goal on there. I found it very interesting. So that's probably why I haven't been really tracking, tracking. So we're gonna try it again today. Going back in there for the 411 out. We had a lot of stuff going on, a lot of trivialities and parties and stuff was being thrown yesterday. A lot of parties was being thrown, so the day was kind of weirded out. So the bar, I mean, so the day, I mean, yesterday was kind of weirded out. Today, I'm gonna go in, pull it together. I'm gonna pull the 411 out for the house. Then I wanna sit down with the wife too. She almost over COVID, almost over. She said her throat was still kinda of hurting her a little bit. So, uh, yeah, these people been coming this way here lately. I've been having to ride over this bump. These hadn't really been the right position for me to go in. But yeah, so I got some work to do. I have a relationship with my goal and relationship with my money that I hadn't had in the past in order to move to this next level. And to move to this next level, you gotta have some type of relationship with money or some or strength. Of, you, you gotta have something. I know it. I know it. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Maybe I jump into this word. I'm seeking the answers to it because I asked the question. I'm seeking the answers today. I'm jumping to this word. I'm gonna find it. Uh, one of the things uh, I heard on a, a gospel commercial said that uh, Psalms 116. God opened my eyes so that I may see clearly. That's one of my that's one of my prayers. But I didn't read that Psalms 116. I'm gonna go ahead and read that whole psalm today. And I'm going to dive into this word seeking the answers, seeking the guidance, seeking the direction. I'm in the right direction, but I'm just going to start chugging along a little. I, I could double up, man. You could. I could pick up the pace. 
pace I know I'm going. You can't go wrong, man, picking up the pace and the word. See? You can't go wrong. Doubling up on God, doubling down, doubling up. You can't go wrong. If my motive's right, I can't go wrong. Because that's all good stuff going in. That's all good stuff. Pastor on the way to work. Peace out. Do it to it.